Thank you. <laughs> we okay, to showtime. Welcome to the recording. <laughs> if we're just tuning in, my name is Gabriel Cortez and I got some poems. <laughs> Yay. Oh, so let me turn on my little timer. Um, this slow piece is called Smoke and Rain in the Bay at the Turn of the Decade. And um, it's dedicated to Moms for Housing who's doing really necessary work um, before the pandemic and currently as well, just to make sure that Black families are housed, which is, we can imagine, is incredibly important right now um, when it's deadly. You know, it's been deadly to be outside. Um, so it's a piece dedicated to them. When the kids are asking me what the fuck I did when the world was billowing enough smoke to circumnavigate the planet and then return to kiss the still burning fire that conjured it, I will say I lived outside a city with clean air scratched into the sides of screaming buses, heavy starlings that reached towards a wire ceiling sky with two bone wings trolling behind them that sparked every now and then, dropping ashes on the folks public transportation lines were built to displace. The T train stays 30 minutes late. My theory of why the baby is still black is also my theory of how to preserve a soul in the age of capitalism, colored people time. Required I show up last to the meeting with my hair coiffed to the side and all my family texted back. This morning, my alarm clock adjusted itself three times in disagreement with its ambitions the night before. The curtains don't want to open today. The deadbolt gripped the door frame the way a mother might hold their child when tanks come rolling through the hood aiming AR-15s behind eviction notices. Last night it rained, which means one, we reset the countdown on when hillside mansions once again go up in flames, and two, the mattress. The couch cushions, the printer box, the luggage case, the bookshelf, the books, the blankets, the portable heater, the styrofoam cups of dehydrated noodles, the Fisher Price playset, the children, the children, the children, the strollers and the black mothers that pushed them, thrown out their house onto the sidewalk like a civil rights activist at a whites only counter got rained on too. And still they showed up to the rally, babies hoisted upon the waist, crying, trying to pronounce a word like repair like reparations. Thank um, you. Oh, hey. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, shout out to Moms for Housing. If you got the resources, make sure to support their work um, financially. You can find their work at Moms for Housing. You can just Google it. And I know that there's also similar work that's been happening in LA too. So make sure you're tapping in with folks that have just been on that mutual aid tip um, and fighting for housing for black and um, brown families. This next piece is new. So um, shout out to, to new pieces. I've been doing a lot of writing um, mm. during this time. I've been really, I think, um, fortunate and privileged to do this. Um, but it's a piece called Video Call with Mom, Seven Weeks into Pandemic. Mm. She holds me in her hands. My mother, not my mother, but light and chemicals stilled into memory. Sepia, wallet size. What shade of brown did the film call her neck then? Single mother blues, summer love baby. My face, not my face, but looking as I must have, moonlike against the summer night of her cheek. I sit beside my mother, 3,000 miles between us. She holds me, not me, in her hands, cradling the camera phone like a baby's soft head. She wants me to see her new hair. When I say my screen locks, I mean, permed braids reach towards the sliver of metal, pressing our cheeks together again. Mm -hmm. A light's blink notifies me this is where natural hair grows from. The world shakes till my mother disables it. I hold the phone so she can see it's day here. She flicks a switch 30 years behind us, illuminating a room only she knows to pronounce home, a city we flee before my first teeth come in. I wonder now her worry, black mother nursing a white child half a country from family, a decade before the repeal of anti-miscegenation law. Before the sun proved us kin, in summer developed my black into a cooked husk of a question mark. People assumed she was my babysitter. I see it now. Video call with my mom, seven weeks in the pandemic. My face, not my face, but a wilting shade of yellow. Couldn't be hers. My mama's black endures. My mama's black survives the end of the world. Mm. Wow. wow. Yeah. Shout out to my mom. Um, maybe my mom will see the recording of this. Yeah. So I love you, mom, if you see this. <laughs> um, and shout out to all the mamas, for mm. real, and figuring out 
um, just what connection, you know, can look like in this time. I think one of the, the things I've been grateful for is um, all the family that's figured out how to work that funky technology of the video call. I know I'm late to it, but it's been really lovely getting the call with fam. Mm -hmm. I got another piece here. Um, this is the first time I'm reading it, actually. Like, I was working on the revisions of this last night. Um, and it's called Gather. And um, yeah, it's in, it's in three parts right now. Gather one, farmer's market, wicker basket, bumblebee. My love marches home from the grocery store. Mask slung a clothesline between her ears, a fridge's worth of sanctuary paper bagged around her feet. She doesn't sit, we don't kiss. Light switches go unflicked until soap hums with birthday song and she is sure no virus gathered in the seams of our living. Gather two. 6.30 a.m., the sun surveys the windows, broken and unbroken alike. There lies a parable here about equality. There lays a child murdered in the streets of Brooklyn. Without looking, what color is their skin? Soon I will decide what shirt to wear to my mugshot, the logistics of bottle and milk, how best to style my hair for beating. What defense is a bicycle helmet from nightstick? a plague's hunger for vulnerable flesh. I prepare the body for arson, swim goggle the gas, bandana breath of the smoke, fly my hair loose and coiling, a flag intent on burning. If cynicism is a hand spreading inside me, I wonder what the man who will arrest me thinks of the star mocking his chest. Does he slide his uniform over his knees one leg at a time? Imagine how stiff a neck grows before breaking Gather three. The safest place to gather when breaking the law, when the law requires breaking, is amongst the people. Mm -hmm. 14th and Broadway, the halfway point between Soul Space pop air bubbles, Panther hoodies, and Oakland PD, where helicopters press like a steel hand atop the heads of protesters. It is 10 minutes past curfew in the latest slave rebellion, and my body is once again fugitive. I find myself four blocks away and late searching for parking spot, searching for police. A choir of eyes blinks open from the back of my neck, alibis spilling across the dash. The theory goes, if a cop tries to arrest me, my 100 pound white girl partner will step between us so I can make a break for it and run. In practice, I hold her shaking hand and she holds mine. We walk the four blocks to the same babble of a street corner where night descends and chant rises like perfume, our gloves laced, a country's distance gathering between our palms. Mm. Hey, oh, I see your virtual snaps. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> I feel it. I receive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How am I doing on time, Angelina? Um, you muted. You're still muted. Oh, okay. Homie, so let's say like uh, one more and then I just want to talk to you for a little bit and then you have five more minutes. Okay. To read. Is that cool? Yeah, that's, okay, that's cool. wonderful. Sweet, okay. sweet. Cool, 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 cool. Um, tight, 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 tight. Let's do, let's do this one. Cool, I got a folder, I got a folder full of poems for y'all. Um, here is a poem before we get into our little conversation. I want to bring a little bit of joy into the space, imagining and remembering this time before pandemic. So this is a poem called Ode to Street Ball. I was raised in the era of street ball, bowed my head at the altar of and one mixtapes and Allen Iverson commercials. While you were practicing free throws, I spent the entire summer flicking an orange wish back and forth between my legs. My first basketball team, I didn't understand why I couldn't bounce the ball off of someone's head. What good is a jersey if it won't carry a small sun into orbit? Where I come from, style is important to gain this final score. So praise the trick pass. Praise the broken ankle. Praise the prayer of a shot answered by the net's clapping teeth. Every possession, the possibility of miracle. Before our fingers could scrape the bottoms of backboards, we dared dream of a dunk that broke the rim and sent the entire playground into retirement. 
We who will never join a league or make a sports center highlight reel scratch our myth in the cracked black top. Weave our breath between chain link three point arcs, lace our shoes till even their stitch draws grow slack with story. Ask the tarmac, ask the tarmac how I shook a man so bad he kissed the earth. Ask the story. Net, how it still sings the quiet impossible foosh each time the ball passes through the bone plucked rim. We play a different game. It is the difference between classical music and jazz, ballet and b-boy, the turntable and what the DJ summons from melted wax. Call it shirts versus skins. Call it winner take ball. Call your own fouls. Win by two. Run it back. And one. Hey, when I'm in person, I like to hit that last line, like, and one. <laughs> but, I feel like I heard that one before. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, um, you know, you said a couple of things. I, at first, I'm going to share something real quick for folks to look at. Um, and, you know, this is a quote from Toni Morrison. This is precisely the time when artists go to work. There is no time for despair no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak, we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. So, you know, having said that, um, you mentioned a couple of things, right? Um, your mom, 3,000 miles away, right? And that connection. Um, and then, you know, we're trying to figure out this technology and, you know, writing before, quarantine and writing after, and then everything that has happened in quarantine, right? You mentioned the protests um, and looking for parking. So my question to you is, given what that quote from Toni Morrison, you know, this is no time for self-pity, we have to do this work. Um, it, and I know it's very cliche. I, I know that, you know, everybody, you know, what I, I guess what I want to get down to, Gabriel, is those moments where you know, you're doing your soul searching and you're thinking about, you know, how do I respond to this, you know, as a person, as just, a, you know, you are a poet and a writer and an activist and all of these things, but really what has Gabriel said to himself to like continue at this moment, right? In whatever, as a son, as a writer, as a compañero, as a you know, community activist, et cetera? Like what's sustaining you right now? Yeah, great question. And thank you for bringing Toni Morrison, you know, the greatest of all time into the space too. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's, it's always, I think, necessary time to reflect on Toni Morrison. <laughs> Just, yeah. Um, in terms of what sustains me, I don't know. Like, I think I got a few different folks is, whose voices are in my head. Um, one, want to shout out, you know, Willie Perdomo, you know, the big homie, um, shout out to Angelina, shout out to Carla, I see you in the video as well, um, and like our week um, together. But I, one thing that I was hearing Willie say, um, I think is he was like, you know, being interviewed about the Breakbeat Poets Volume 4, like him and Jose just were kind of making their rounds on Jose Olivares. But he was saying that like, um, in a time like this, it's like, if you're gonna write, you know, try to write everything. Hmm. Um, try to, you know, like, because folks are really going to be wondering, like, outside of this historic moment that we're in, like, what, what really was life like? So, like, if you do got that privilege to put pen to page, like, put it all down um, and really be that documenter, documentarian in that way. Um, but I also think of Jose, you know, in that moment, too, where he's like, yo, bro, I can't write right now. Like, I got other more important things to tend to. And I think... Um, like that, having one of my other mentors, Bo Sia, um, shout out to LA, I know he's, he's down there, um, where he, I think I got a lot of permission to like, the writing's gonna come, you know? I think what's important right now, when we're in the midst of the wound that Toni Morrison was talking about, like bump healing right now, we gotta get through, we gotta survive the moment, you know? So like, what does living look like? Um, and yeah, we're gonna be writing about this moment for forever, I think. So whenever I'm not feeling like I can write right now, it's just maybe there's something I, I gotta I gotta survive right now, mm. and that'll come. Mm. So what is one thing that you're doing to soothe right now? Like I just kind of but I like binge watch a show. I'm like I can't. I only like I'll only look at comedy or romance. I'm like I can't. I need to get my mind off of things. So what is something that it's kind of like your cow gone take me away? Yay, great question. I got a few things in rotation for sure. 
One, I want to shout out Sandy, who's in this call right now, who um, has been, yeah, we've been trading food, you know, like. Yay! And, and so, you know, just getting to eat with the homies as best we can. Um, also, been putting me on the jazz, you know, like, um, so, like, been listening to, like, Terrace Martin and, like, Kamasi Washington and, um, like, even, like, you know, Nina Simone, you know, like, I've been, you know, just kind of searching back and trying to, um, coming back to music, you mm. know, and, like, yo, I don't got any words right now. I can't put on a podcast or put on, you know, Democracy Now! right now, and, and I will put on it, like, in a second, but, like, but for right now, I just need a little bit of music. Um, that and um, plants, for real. Like, I've become a proud plant parent, and I have them constantly <laughs> surrounding me. So um, it's been really beautiful just to remember that, you know, we're in summer now, but, like, when spring, you know, the beginning, and just seeing all the flowers, kind of popping up around just a reminder that like yeah the human world might be you know might have been you know crashing you know but but flowers are still blooming right now and, and that's really necessary wow beautiful all right well close us out my friend with your final poems thank you so much for being here yeah oh of course thank you so much for having me yeah cool cool so i'm gonna do Let's see. So I'm gonna read um, since I shouted out uh, the anthology, which I'm so proud to be in. Oh my gosh, I'm in a book. What? Um, so bring and is Carla in there too? That. Carla's in there. Is Carla on that in that book also? Can we unmute Carla and like ask like Carla, are you in here? <laughs> hey, I'm <laughs> unmuting her. Oh, her. Carla, are you in here? Hello, fam. <laughs> can y'all? I mean, let me see. I can hear you. Candy grapes, listening to poems. It's a good day. What's up? <laughs> Yo, are you in this book? Are you in here? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Carla's in here. Yo, Carla, Sergio, yeah, homies from the Vona workshop are up in here. Amazing. Um, yes. Um, but I wanted to read a little piece. Hi, Carla. Yo, eat, eat that grape. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna read a quick piece from this, and it, um, it's called Fat Joe, the Ninth Grade Dance. Um, mm. My niggas don't dance, we just pull up our pants and hug ourselves. We're sure no one else will. We cradle the gangly architecture puberty left us, five feet, 10 inches of ash and bone and the most crisp white teeth our mother's ironing boards could conjure. Fists clenched around any baseline that promises to swell our sharp elbows a suit of armor. Cause ever since Ty got armpit hair and started flexing muscles that even make the teachers look twice, Ever since we grew taller than our girlfriends and thought ourselves men. Ever since Maria got pregnant and Jeremy got his teeth kicked in and we saw them break like dice across the school parking lot. Ever since then, my niggas don't smile. My niggas don't dance. My niggas square up. My niggas carve Ona and Radius in the sword and shield. My niggas turn quiet survival tactics cacophony each time we lean back. Mm. And I want to share that because you were helping me workshop that piece, Angelina. That's right. That's right. I remember <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, and I got another piece um, just on the new tip. Um, yeah. You know, I've been thinking a lot about uh, revision, mm -hmm. like a lot, um, just in terms of where it fits into my practice, in terms of the possibilities for, you know, maybe this, this world that we're stepping into. It's like, yo, what can we cut that was heck of whack from before? you know, and, 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 you know, like write and invent and, and build more deeply into. So that was like a question of a workshop that I led recently through the Root Slam. Um, and here's kind of a piece that I've been thinking about. Um, it's, it's a Ars Poetica, Ars Poetica revision. And it starts with an epigraph um, from Twitter. So at Savon Bartley, at Team Dark Noise, have the first poems intro the world slash languages the book is going to explore, like a key on a map. Hashtag books with my woes mm -hmm. at Jamila Woods. Once I lived in the only town I'd ever lived. There, the trees swayed with caterpillars and fireflies competed with streetlights to send our kid bodies into the night. Our hands cupped in fields, running, trying to capture what glowed above our heads and told us in our mother's voices, it's time to come home. Then I moved. Where once was cicada song, 
Construction jackhammered the air. I learned the taste of words like cul-de-sac, outlet mall, fifth grade and friendless, memory to only myself. My first revision was my name. Call me Gabriel. Call me Mouse. What use are angels for a 10-year-old boy in God's country anyways? If I must start over, let me love all that is unremarkable in me. Big ears, buck teeth, my elusive shade of brown. Let me be the tall grass where the ticks live, small enough to slip under any door. Let me find sustenance in what was thrown out, left to rot, if not forever, for now. A name like a home, like a first draft, is temporary. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So, um, okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, amazing, I'm so glad that you were here. We'll be back next Sunday with Janice Miller. Um, have an amazing afternoon. And if you have any comments or anything, please leave it at the La Palabra Facebook page or somehow message me at Avenue 50. But thank you, Gabriel, a todos. Feliz tarde. Uh, muchos abrazos y hasta pronto. Adiós. Peace.